as Glow mentioned, we have a lot going on with summer coming. We have next week, we have our church is coming. They're our sponsoring church. We have two from there that will be joining us and they're, um, they're, they're young. I know that one of them's young. Steve's probably older than he looks. Hmm? We don't have summer in Thailand. <laughs> we always have summer in Thailand. And uh, so they'll be here, and then we'll have the ACU students joining us as well with, let me see, hold on a second. I show Chan Rien Kong Eric, na? Okay, thanks. The red dog. So, um, so then we'll have the AC students here this summer. So um, similar to last summer, we have several special projects going on with like Glow mentioned in his sermon. And then we'll be taking a trip to a rural area of the Lille province. And we'll be doing a medical mission up there. And then we'll have our English camp again as well. So a lot of things going on and a lot that, um, that you guys will be able to be a part of as well as we continue ministry with the urban refugees. And as Glow mentioned, uh, many people are just very thankful and proud of our congregation and you guys uh, for joining in in that. Um, yesterday, Neil and I, we went to visit one community yesterday and it is just hot in Thailand and it's, uh, you know, it's not an easy thing going, going out and running around and carrying, Neil and I carried, what was it? 30 kilos of rice across like a walkway bridge <laughs> in, midday, in midday heat, you know? And uh, so, uh, but it was a really good thing and the community was really thankful for that. Um, but maybe another time, um, just when we have more time together, um, we can do something where as we do that, I think it'd be really good to just do something small for like the kids, um, where if some of the girls go, like Michelle, Nicole, Lynn, um, where like we can have something for the kids. They really liked that at Christmas time when we went. So um, these are all things to be thinking and praying about as, as the summer just approaches. So uh, before we get started for today, um, I want to, to go to God in prayer. And we have Doris visiting. We'll be praying for her and her ministry. Any other things you guys want to pray about as we get started? Our friendship. For Chip. Uh -huh. Chip and his safety. We pray for Dennis and Bernard traveling. Yeah, long journey from America. Have you seen the Facebook post that Chip has put on there in the last two days? Mm -mm -mm. It don't look like a nice place to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, war zones are never fun to be in. So we're praying for them. Mm -hmm. Nepal. Yeah, a lot going on there. Do you remember Bill McDonald? Bill McDonald that taught here? Um, they're there in Nepal now. They're an elderly couple. They've done a lot in Cambodia. But him and his wife, they're there in Nepal right now, helping with Church of Christ's relief. Hmm? No, they visited a while back. So, But they've lived, I think, in Thailand for a while. But they're there now helping with relief efforts. So lot going on. Any other prayer requests? So New Siam Legal in Pattaya, is that right? Yeah. So pa this is Siam Legal Pattaya Phase 2, mm -hmm. right? I'm currently training in the medical, and after my PD, I will be transferring to the Okay, wow. So we'll pray for you in being in Pattaya. So <laughs> we talked about Pattaya last week, so rough place. Um, but it can be nice, but, uh, but overall, I think rough, you know? <laughs> But uh, so we'll be praying about all these things. So let's go to God in prayer and then we'll get started. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this time this morning as uh, we gather here, God. And we thank you for just being able to come together as your church um, to study your word. We pray as well that you, uh, that you be with Eric and the group upstairs that are meeting as uh, with the new Christians and those looking at becoming um, disciples, God, and taking you on in baptism, um, that you open up um, your message to them as well. We pray to be with many um, from our church family here that are scattered across the globe right now with um, Dennis and um, Bernard being in the States. We pray that you watch over them, God, um, and that you be with them as they connect with other congregations. We pray you be with Chip and keep him safe as well. Um, while he's in Africa, God, um, we pray that you continue to empower um, your church to be a helping hand, God, in nations like Nepal um, and relief efforts there, Lord. And um, we pray that you be with all the many things we have going on here, God, um, that you prepare um, beautiful things ahead of us as the summer comes. I pray you be with my friend Steve and 
Adam, while they uh, get ready to leave their families to come visit um, us here in Thailand, that you keep them safe um, over their travels, God, um, and that, uh, that you bless our time together um, as a congregation. Father, we pray that you open up our hearts and minds here right now as we look at your word, God, and as we talk about sharing your gospel message, Father. We pray that it's something that we get excited about um, and something that we can do genuinely, God, in our lives. Father, we pray all these things in your holy name. Amen. Okay, so several comments uh, about my speaking fast because I'm an Easterner, maybe, from America. So I'll try and speak a little slower for y'all, um, Southerners and... Uh, second language English speakers, if you guys, uh, if I start going off too fast um, in New York Minute, whatever, you can let me know, okay? <laughs> I'll try and keep it down, but, uh, but uh, we'll see, so. No. Yeah, man, you know, uh, so this one's a bad one. Okay, so last week, we, uh, last week, we talked and we end our, our session on talking about preparing uh, places spiritually for the kingdom of God. We talked about how as we look at people and places that God is already at work there, right? Um, we know from other verses um, that as we go into things, as we go into a situation, that God has been there before us. So we talked about uh, how we, we have responsibility to pray over these situations. You know, it's amazing things. As I look at Mick, Mick's a great example of this. Um, as, as we come into places, sometimes God does things in our lives we can't see. And Royal Bible School is one of those things where, you know, Mick found our church through things online. Um, and we pray often for these things, right? For God to open up hearts and lives. Um, so we always need to be watchful in looking uh, for these examples. And we talked about um, the discipline of praying over an area and learning how to pray over just places and situations. And we talked about prayer walking um, and doing this as we go to work, as we go to, uh, to just other parts of town, praying over that place. And I mentioned that uh, close by here, there's the train tracks, right? And all along the, the train tracks, there's the slums. Um, we call it slums or or uh, maybe this is what they say in Thai, or shantytown. Um, as I say, does that make sense? You know, homes where people have taken leftover scraps. Um, they take advertisement signs and banners and scrap wood, and that's their home. You know, that's their home that they live in. I remember when I lived at, at Romcom Hang um, and did uh, ministry there before, uh, walking through the slums to go to a friend's home, you know. And some of our members of our congregation live in homes like this, uh, these these uh, really just uh, humble communities. Did you have something you were going to say there? Uh, in my area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along the river, as you get close to the river, right? You'll find, uh, you'll find these kind of living quarters anywhere in Bangkok where there's construction going on. That's right. That's right. Here, the, the construction workers, as they move here, they, they build their home right on the job site. Um, so what does that mean for education? You know, I met kids where they don't, have, they don't have proper education because every so often they're moving to a new place. So right along us here, we, you know, there are construction sites along the river and along the train tracks all along. There's a slum community right over there. So last week, I gave the challenge to us, you know, to, to go out and to to prayer walk, just as you go on your way, or maybe to do a special one along your neighborhood. And, um, and I went along the train track here again, and then in our neighborhood around, just to look and to see what kind, of, what kind of ways might people be looking and hungering and thirsting for the kingdom? What does God need to do um, in this neighborhood? What does God need to do among my colleagues? So I just want to spend a little time um, as, as you look around your neighborhood, um, Mick already mentioned he has a, a slum community there. What kind, of, what kind of hungering do you see for God? Hungering. Hungering or thirsting uh, for the kingdom, as Jesus said. And your neighborhoods, uh, you know, maybe it's not even, not even a slum. You can see it, you know, at, at skyscrapers, I think, at Asuk. What kind of, what kind of ways um, did you guys see people needing God. 
Yeah. So, so there's a lot of, uh, of poverty, right? Um, people talk about today extreme poverty, uh, where people live on less than $1 a day, right? Um, so yeah, there's, there's um, a lot of issues that, that go on with that. Any other, any other things you guys see while you, while you looked around your neighborhoods? So that's, that's really good. So this is the, the poor community. What about in the skyscrapers? <laughs> is, there any, is there any hungry and thirsting? Are people searching for anything in the skyscrapers? Sometimes as people look at cities like Bangkok, where we always have a new shopping mall popping up, right? Um, that's somehow more expensive and better than the last one. Um, do people need anything? Is there any hungry and thirsting um, among? They, what, they want relaxation, are you saying? Peace. Peace, okay. So yeah, that's really good. So they're living really busy lives, um, crazy bustling lives. Um, they want to escape, right? They want peace. Um, it's really good. Um, so what else? Um, as we look at, at like higher society, sometimes we, we like the idea that we have everything together, right? But in reality, um, in reality, sometimes it's a controlled pursuit for, I want to make my own happiness, right? Happiness is a big concept today. We want happiness. We, want to, we believe that we can achieve our own happiness. If just we work hard enough, if just we pay enough for it, right? Um, so we've talked about this a lot as Christians, but um, pursuing worldly things, right? If I just get that newest car, if I just get that newest phone, right? Um, but in reality, whenever we, we strive for these things, once we've got it, how does it feel? It just, it just kind of passes away, right? There's never full fulfillment in looking for um, happiness in this way, right? But yet, we know that there's this hungering. Uh, there's something within us that says, I want, I want more. Um, I'm looking for more in my life. Yeah. So, um, so as people, as we know, there, there's all these, these polar, polarized ideas, right? Polarized situations in Bangkok um, and across the world, right? But yet the gospel, as we talk about the gospel, which is the good news for everyone, right? It is the good news for no matter who it is that you are. Um, and it's going to fulfill whatever needs people have, no matter how extreme the situation, the good news, the gospel um, can help. Um, and I want to talk about what is this gospel message this morning, and how is it that it's good news? Because I think that sometimes we can know the gospel, we can know the death, burial, and resurrection. You can turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to read from there in a second. We can understand this concept that Jesus died and he rose again, right? But sometimes we don't know how to explain how this is good news. 
Uh, sometimes it can seem so distant, especially to strangers that don't know about Jesus. Um, in what ways is it good news? So I want to I want to talk about this this morning and how it is that we can, with our conversation, be planting gospel seeds of of hope and of love and of life and liberation that is good news to those around us. So turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 1. Paul, writing to explain this, this same thing, he says in verse 1, he says, Now, brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel that I proclaim to you. So he's saying, you know, while I was there, I talked about this, but I want to explain it a little bit more. He says, you received it, and you have taken your stand on it. And this is the same for all of us that are Christians, right? We've, we've accepted, we've believed this gospel. And he says, and you are also saved by it if you hold to the message I proclaim to you unless you believe for no purpose. For I pass on to you what was most important I also received. And he says, that was Christ who died for our sins according to scriptures and was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to scripture. So let me erase this a little bit. So we know, we know this concept, right? Um, this is the same thing uh, that we showed on the PowerPoint before, the, the plan of God, right? That he would send his son Jesus to this earth to die on our behalf, right? On that cross. Um, that he would be buried. He'd be buried in that tomb, right? That he wouldn't stay in. That he would be raised again. Um, and sometimes we stop there. Sometimes we say, you know, Jesus rose again from the dead. And, and that's really good. Um, but sometimes we, we, we forget that as he rose, it says that once he rose, he, he ascended so that he can send his spirit, right? So he can bless us. He can empower us today. Sometimes as we talk about this, um, you know, we talk about Jesus. He died, buried, and rose again. But as I tell this to a stranger, if I just said, I have really good news for you. There's this guy named Jesus who lived 2,000 years ago, and he died. <laughs> People killed him. Um, they really didn't like him, and they stopped him, they killed him. Then he died on a cross. It was really sad, and he was buried away. And then he rose again. It's like he rose from the dead. Um, well, it, sometimes I think as we say this, there's this question mark and this question of, of so what, as they hear it. And this is just me being honest. Sometimes we say it, we'll explain this, and we can be excited about it because we know the blessings we receive. But there's a question of still, it's not quite touching the ground. We have to answer the, the so what. Um, this is the gospel, and I believe this is the good news. But unless we explain how this is good news, um, how it's good news, it's not, it's not good yet. Um, I really like an example that someone gave of believing in good news. When we, when we truly believe that something's good, we can't help but talk about it, right? Um, when, we, when we have something exciting going on, we can't help but share about it. Uh, when a new mall opens up, oh, have you been to the new mall? Been to M whatever? Um, you gotta go. Oh, have you seen this movie? You know, it's, it's so good, you've, you've gotta go. Um, I like the example of being on an airplane. Um, who's ever flown on an airplane? Most of us here, maybe everyone's had to, right? So we're all in Thailand, none of us are from here. Okay, so we've all flown on airplanes, right? What happens at the beginning of the plane before it takes off? What happens on the plane before it takes off? We sit. They tell us the rules, right? Whoever listens to this, who's ever like, I really want to pay attention right now to what they're saying. No, most people don't listen, right? <laughs> what do they talk about? What are the things that they talk about? They tell us the rules, yeah, like don't run, don't smoke. We don't want to die from you. But then what else do they say? Yeah, if the plane crashes, what needs to happen? Uh, you need to know what you have to do. Yeah, you need to know what you have to do, right? And they, they, show the, like, they show their mask thing. They're like, here's the mask. They say, put it on you first and put it on the other. They're like, here's your flotation device. Normally it doesn't matter because you're flying over land. But they're like, here's a flotation device. And they're like, here's your life jacket thing. <laughs> you can suck in at both sides, right? Um, but a lot of people, we don't care. <laughs> Right? No one's, a lot of times we're like, you know, I'm trying to Instagram this right now, or I'm trying to get my music going before you, before you make me stop. Um, but, um, but 
this can be very good and important news, right? Does it normally seem very important to us? No. Normally we don't care. <laughs> we don't care that much, right? Because of our situation. Uh, we don't care because it's not relevant to us at the time. We hear and like, yeah, I know what you're saying. I understand that it has value. But let's say all of a sudden that um, we look out the window and we see flanks of metal coming off the wing. <laughs> um, and we see smoke coming and people are panicking and screaming. Um, all of a sudden, what those people were said a moment ago is going to be very important to us, right? <laughs> it's going to be very important. Um, what changed? Did the message change? The message didn't change, right. So what's changed? The situation. The situation. It seems more important now, right? Because without this information, what's going to happen? Uh, you could be uh, dead. <laughs> yeah, not just could, but you're going to be dead, basically, right? <laughs> um, if you didn't pay attention before, if you didn't listen up, man, um, you're in trouble, basically. Um, Without, without this information, it's good news because this is going to save your life basically on this plane as it's, as it's going down. Um, and so now all of a sudden, wow, this is valuable information. You're sitting next to someone, they're like, you know, I was on my headphones, like, no, what do I do? <laughs> um, you've got news now to save their lives basically. And I really think that sometimes for us today, the gospel is very similar. Um, look here in Acts chapter two. Acts chapter 2, as the gospel message is proclaimed for the first time. Um, Peter tells them, you know, repent, believe, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. He says, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that's promised for you and for your children and all who are far off. It means the Lord God will call. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 40, it says this. And it says, with many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, be saved from this corrupt generation. Uh, we know that today, a part of the problem with, the, with needing to tell the gospel is we need to explain this situation, right? Many times we're on that plane, right? If, uh, if we use the illustration again, we're already on that plane. Oh, this is hideous. Pretend this is pretty. Uh, what is that? Okay. It just gets worse. <laughs> if we're on this plane, okay? And, uh, and it's going down. Um, it's crashing, right? It's so ugly, man. <laughs> um, but the problem is, the problem is, is that the devil, oh, this one's worse. What is the deal? Um, <laughs> um, the problem is, is that many people, um, they don't notice, right? No one notices that we're on a plane that's heading to disaster, basically, right? Um, Peter, he says, he strongly urged him to be saved from this corrupt generation. He says, you know, you're on, you're on a plane that's heading for disaster. You're on a sinking ship that's going down. So there's this, there's this urgency that, that we've got to wake people up. People are, are kind of stuck in a rut of, I'm just going through as, as days go by, basically, right? You know, I keep buying the new phone, but it doesn't help. I got the new job promotion, but it didn't help. You know, I live in this community. There's no way out. My husband beats me. My kids don't have education. It's just the same. Um, it's just floating along. Um, they don't know that there's a good news to happen, basically. And this is why today, as we talk about the gospel, and as we talk about Jesus coming to this world, who says, I have all power and authority um, that's been given to me. He's been giving, all of it is in my hands and I've given that to you to use. If this can't be relevant, something's wrong, right? Um, but it is. I believe that this gospel message, man, that it can save us for today because it is a message of hope, right? It's a message of hope and of life and of love and liberation. Sometimes though, we don't know how to transfer that. We don't know how to say how this means freedom for you who's bound. This means hope for you. This means life for you, the abundant life for you that's been seeking that out in all these material ways, basically. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about this morning is, is making that message relevant and real. 
Um, because if we don't also share the message genuinely, we don't talk about how, how this message saves me, how this is going to save you, then, then it's just going to pass in through other ears, right? I've heard really great sermons about good news, <laughs> but then no one knew how to act on it, basically, right? Um, it's not about making a case. It's about showing what this means for other people. Um, and there's response to that. So as we've already talked about uh, preparing the spiritual ground, um, now we're going to be talking about planting seeds of the gospel. Um, and I think that today, in our world today, we have a critical, uh, we have a critical mindset sometimes towards outside information, right? I think that, uh, I don't know if it's always been like this, but definitely today, when we hear news, uh, when we hear news, we're always a bit skeptic. Some of us more than others. Uh, because we know that people twist news, right? We know that, oh, this is news coming from your side. <laughs> but if you look on this side, they say this, right? Um, so we always are a little critical of when people are saying things. Um, if they just, they're just shouting out, well, you know, what's the, what's the catch? What is your gain from this? What is your agenda here? Um, but the gospel, um, the gospel is this free message for all. Turn with me to Colossians. Um, Colossians chapter 4. <coughs> Prayer for doors open. Uh, let's start. So Colossians chapter 4, um, starting in verse 2. Um, this is his ending remarks to the church here. As Paul says, devote yourselves to prayer. He says, stay alert with thanksgiving. And at the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door for the message. Uh, he says, pray for us that God may open a door. So that's, that's that phase one that we talked about before, right? Um, preparing the soil. Paul says, please pray for that message of God. Please pray that God prepares a way ahead of us. Um, so verse Verse three, um, that God may open up doors for the message so that we can to speak the mystery of the Messiah for which I am in prison. He says, pray that doors are open so that we can present that good news of God's plan, right? God's plan, that mystery for ages, right? That before time began, God was going to send his savior. Um, in verse four, he says, so that I may reveal it as I am required to speak. It says, walk in wisdom towards outsider, making most of the time so that your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so you may know how you should answer each person. Um, as Paul says this, um, as Paul says, you know, right now, um, as, I, as we talk about these things and spiritual growth and church growth and church planning, um, it's really easy, I feel like, to become uh, pragmatic, to think that we have to have a special program, right? And sometimes it's good to be prepared, um, but I don't think the result is, is rigid programs. And I've been a part of some, some, and sometimes they can be fruitful things that God, uh, that God can use well, but I don't think the answer necessarily is, okay, we're going to tackle Bangkok in teams of, 10 teams of two, we're going to knock every single door in each condo, you know. We can hit it in this way, and we might reach some people, but there's a lack of genuineness, I think. Because as Paul says here, hold on a minute. As Paul says here, he says, we need to walk in wisdom towards outside. He says, making the most of the time. He says, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Um, so as, we, as we're trusting in God, that he's preparing the soil ahead of us, this means we're trusting that he's going to be putting people in our lives um, that are ready in looking for gospel. Saying that we just need to be alert. We need to keep our eyes open of how we need to give them that gospel of, of life and love and liberation. Um, and I think that Jesus himself modeled this very beautifully in his life, right? As when Jesus was doing ministry, sometimes people, they'd come to him. In John chapter 3, I'll just paraphrase, uh, as John chapter 3, we see Nicodemus come, right? Um, and what does he come to Jesus wanting to know? Hmm? Yeah, he's like, who are you? Who's this guy? <laughs> and what does Jesus talk to him about? 
Yeah, he starts talking about spirit and this, this being reborn. Um, and he doesn't quite get it yet, right? Um, but he starts saying, starts saying how uh, God's people, they're born of, of spirit. You've got to be reborn to enter into, into this kingdom. I mean, he says how the father has sent his son. Um, John 3, 16, right? This is that situation. It says God sent his son to this world out of love for it. So Jesus, Jesus was ready. Um, there's this person ready, looking for news. It wasn't quite what he thought he was looking for, but Jesus gave him this kingdom gospel. Um, in the next page of your Bible, in John chapter 4, we see the same thing happen, right? While Jesus waiting at a well in Samaria, and a woman shows up, right, to get some water. And what do they end up talking about? They talk about several things. They talk about some politics, some hot issues of of uh, religion a little bit they talk about social taboos right why are you talking to me you're a jew i'm a i'm a woman and i'm i'm from samaria but jesus he changes the subject i mean he says he says i want to tell you about everlasting water right um and jesus told her how this is what you're looking for um and he tells her to go call her husband right opening up the issue of sin because in reality sin is at the root of all of it um, the gospel is something that liberates us from that yoke of sin. And he talks about how now is a new time when we'll be able to worship the Father in spirit. So Jesus made it real for her. He was ready and looking and open for this. Um, sometimes, sometimes the problem is, like what he's saying, here it says pray in Colossians chapter 4, pray that we can be alert, um, that we can be looking, that we can be ready, because sometimes maybe there's opportunities for the gospel that we miss. Um, the other day, yesterday, um, as I mentioned, went out to the, where the Pakistanis were, and I was on Sukhum Wit, and I think we've talked about this a little bit in, in just our church, but lately we know that the Thai government has been stricter on immigration law, right? Um, you know, there was maybe six months ago since then, there's been a lot of people cracking down on, on immigrants. And I have, I've seen on the news, I've seen on Twitter about just foreigners randomly being checked along Sukhum Wit basically, that you need to be ready, be sure to have your passport and these things because they're checking for people. And not just, you know, uh, not just people that, that they feel like are suspicious, just everyone, you know? And I've seen people on Twitter posts when they're like, you know, I was American, I was checked, I was Scottish, I was checked. And yesterday, it happened to me. <laughs> I was walking along the road and I saw a police and a motorcycle and I just said, hello, and he says, hello. And he, he asked me in Thai, he said, are you mixed? You know, Luke Kung. I don't know if, you, if you've heard this before. They always ask me this, like every other Thai I talk to. They're like, are you half Thai? Or half baby is what it means, but so are you mixed? And it's a complicated answer for me because I am like mixed is what we say, right? So I'm like, I never know what to say. I'm like, uh, yeah, but not, I'm not half Thai. I was like, I'm mixed, but I'm not with Thai. And he goes, oh, what kind of Lukung are you? You know, I told him I'm African-American Irish. He goes, you're American. And I said, yeah. He goes, okay, you work in Thailand, you know? And I said, yeah, I work here. He's like, all right, what you got in the bag? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, random bag check, you know? So I'm like, I just got some things here. I've got my notebook and Bible. And I say, I work here in Thailand. Um, I'm a, I don't say missionaries, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I say, you know, I work with a church and an NGO. I teach people about, about God and, and, uh, and help people in bad situations. And as I'm saying this, you know, I'm giving him my business card and I have those little gospel cards also. So I'm trying to give him like a little piece of gospel to a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You know, he sees the gospel card and it's in Thai that I've made with John 3, 16, right? He goes, oh, okay. And like now it makes sense. Before the word church wasn't clicking with him. But he's like, oh, okay. He's like, you're, you're a Christian. Oh, okay. So he's like, all right. And um, you know, I'm like, I don't have my passport on me, by the way. So I'm like, I hope he doesn't like want to see my passport because I didn't have it. <laughs> um, and I was just thinking about how before going to Pakistanis, we always need to like be sure to have our passports in case this happens because technically we could be arrested. <laughs> so, um, and there, sure enough, it happens to me. And so I'm like, you know, I'm here. I teach you about Jesus. He goes, oh, okay. And I'm like, no, you can take it. I'm like, this is what I do. Um, I talked to him about Jesus, but it was kind of a, a last minute thing. Um, but, but, it, but it was a good reminder of that we always need to be ready, basically, right? I wasn't ready at the time with my passport, <laughs> um, but we always need to be ready to give the gospel because the gospel means the most to us when we need it. 
right? When we know that we, hold on a second, when we know that we need it, right? Just like we talk about on the airplane. We're on the airplane when it's going up and everything is cozy. Do we feel like we need that information? No. <laughs> um, just that same message, it doesn't really mean anything until we realize, we realize our situation, right? The situation sometimes doesn't change, but us being aware of the situation changes everything, right? Um, and that's why it's important we keep our eyes open. Because same for, I feel like, these people we see with these encounters of God in the Bible, it's not just that they encountered this person that told them the message, it was that time and place, when and where it happened. Um, and we see this in, in Acts. Let, we'll look at the verse real quick. In Acts chapter 17, as Paul is giving uh, the message to the group in Athens about this God that they don't know. He talks about God's foreknowledge and reaching out to all people in verse 26. He says in verse, actually chapter 17, verse 26 says, from one man, he made every nation of men to live all over the earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of where they might live so that they might seek God and perhaps they might reach out and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Um, so, so Paul is pointing out that God, it says that he's determined the exact time and place where we might be so that we can best find God. And it's a little creepy, right? So, you know, for some of us, we'll, we'll use Mick as an example, right? So were you born in Wales? Did you grow up in, you're born in Wales. So it's like, so Mick, it's like, Mick, you'll be born. Here's the world. That's too low, huh? No one can see that. Okay, so here's the world. It says, Mick, Mick's going to be born here in, in Wales, right? And he's going to hear about Thailand over here um, in the year 2000, 2013. Um, so he's finding this place, this time. He says, I want you right there at right this time so that you can best find God. We know other verses like this, right? I mean, Peter has got, as Peter writes, that God is patient, not wanting any to perish, right? But all to come to a knowledge to know him. Um, so God basically, he's making these opportunities for all of us. Later on, Paul goes on to explain um, in verse 30, it says, therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God now commands all people everywhere to repent. God wants all people to repent because we're without excuse. Because in verse First 31 says, because he has set a day on which he is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he has appointed. He has provided proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Um, so he says that now God requires everyone. We're without excuse, basically. Um, all people need to know the gospel. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes we like to make up, we like to make up drastic situations, right? as we talk about maybe um, people not knowing. It's like, what if they don't know Jesus? What if they just don't hear about it? Um, what's going to happen? Um, as we talk about the plane, the plane going down, um, it's, it's like, what if, they just, what if they just don't hear the message? What if they just don't hear about the, the math? What if they just don't hear about the flotation device? Are you saying that, are you saying that when they hit the water that they're gonna drown, they're gonna, they're gonna die, they're gonna perish? Uh, sometimes with the gospel, we like to make excuses because it, it's a painful thing to deal with in reality, right? But it's thinking about people that we know, that we love, and some that we just don't know around the world dying outside of Christ. We make excuses that, oh, I'm sure that, that something will happen, but we know that God has commanded all people to come to this knowledge. Um, so for us, I believe, I believe that God isn't unfair, <laughs> Um, as it says, God is patient, right? Um, it says that God has determined these situations. So what that means for us is, is that there's people um, that are needing us to share that message with them. Just like on the plane, um, there's hope. There's a way to be alive. There's a way to be saved. They just got to know it. Um, it's the same for the people that we know today, um, that there's that right time and place for the gospel. Are we willing to, to share? Are we willing to, to open up? To that message. Sometimes there's times I feel like when the Holy Spirit is 
calling on us to be used to share the message. We need to be bold to act on it. Um, there's a, there was a time in, in the past, I mentioned I worked for the construction company. There was a little while when Michelle and I were in college, maybe my least favorite job ever, we worked for a call center as, what do you call that? Call center doing, what's that called? Telemarketing. Um, where basically, we really hate this in America. I don't know if this happens in other countries, but where you know, you're calling people at their home for advertising, you know, to try and make a sale of some kind, basically. Um, do they do that? Do you do that in Philippines? Um, you get a call. It doesn't happen a lot on cell phones, but we did this for a while, and I just hated it. I really don't know anyone that likes this job. It's the kind of job that, that you just do because you need, you need a job, basically. So no one likes it. And um, there, was a, there was one day I remember working there. Most people working there, they're in just bad situations. Like I was, co I was in college. I, was, you know, I needed money <laughs> um, for college. But you know, there's other people, adults, that are they're caring for families. They have teenagers. And going through the calls, you know, you're rejected a lot. No one answers. Or they're angry at you. They're like, why are you calling me at home? They hang up. So it's a little stressful. Um, but I notice a coworker next to me who's just really down. Um, she just seemed like especially upset. And then at, at the break, every so often there's breaks. People can go smoke and things like this. And she still just seemed upset. So I asked, you know, how's it going? She's really upset. Um, and something on me was just like, you know, I should just say something encouraging to her. And um, as I thought about it, I was like, it's kind of weird. Um, she's an older person, and I didn't know her very well, but something just, uh, something I just wanted to pray over her and to say, um, I want you to know that, that God, I believe that, that we have a God who's always in control and looking out for us. And whatever it is that's going on, that, that'll be okay. And as I was going through all the calls, something on me just said, you know, you need to do this. Um, so I used my little... Uh, my little track card I keep records on. I just wrote a little note in between my calls and I said, somebody was like, I, just, I think I should just give this to her. Um, and so I did and at the coffee, at the next like break I said, you know, I was, I was thinking about you and I just wanted to, to give this to you. And which is kind of a risky thing to an extent. It seems risky to us at the time. It's like, who, who cares? <laughs> this person I never really see. Um, you know, I've, I've rarely ever seen this person um, outside of the situation. So for some reason though, it's really scary when we go into situations like this, right? Rejection. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I give it to them, and then we go through calls again. I didn't know what she thought of it, and I didn't know how spiritual or not spiritual they were. Um, but then afterwards, um, she came up and was just uh, in tears. You know, she said, things have been just so bad right now. And she said, you know, thank you for this reminder um, and for remembering that, that things can be okay. Um, and it, it was a good reminder to me that, that sometimes we don't realize the hope that we can give to others. Sometimes we don't realize um, the message of encouragement that we need to be sharing to those around us. Um, but sometimes, sometimes it takes us putting ourselves out there, right? Um, it takes us putting ourselves out there in risky situation and, uh, and breaking down uh, barriers with people. Um, as we talk about planting seeds of the gospel, um, I want us to look again more at uh, sharing messages like this of, of life and love and liberation. As we talked about prayer walking and seeing, seeing people in the slums and seeing, seeing people in these situations, how is this a helpful message to them? And I believe that the gospel is relevant and helpful because we don't just share the message in terms of information, but it's a message that changes lives, right? Um, and we do so in truth, but also in action. Um, the gospel means that we're there on the ground. We're helping in it as well. And that's what I want to talk more about next week. Um, so for us today, I want us to take hold of this message from Colossians that we saw. Colossians chapter 4. Um, as it talks about, he said in chapter 2, he said, or chapter 4 in verse 2, he said, devote yourself in prayer and stay alert. Stay alert is what we talked about before, right? Um, are we alert? Are we looking at the people around us? Um, are we seeing the ways that they're hungering? Are we seeing the ways that they're thirsting? Um, and he says, he says then in verse 3, um, I'm sorry, in verse 5, he says, walk in wisdom. Uh, be wise in how you're acting with your friends, your family, uh, making the most of time, and let your speech always be seasoned with salt. Um, so what I want to challenge us in uh, these coming weeks is how are ways that we can sprinkle our, our speech with salt? How are ways that we can sprinkle um, the things that we say 
uh, with our friends, our families, our coworkers, with strangers at times, with the gospel message of salt. Um, that's what I want us to be, to be thinking about, because I believe that's what, Jesus, that's what Jesus did. We don't see him running up randomly to people, saying, I've got something I want to tell you. But as he encountered them, he was ready. He shared it in a normal and natural way. And that's what we'll talk about more in the coming weeks. Uh, so as we end, uh, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, um, God, I thank you for this time um, and just looking more about what the gospel means, God. I pray that you can help us um, to fully understand um, your saving power, God, and how powerful it is that you are, um, that you've chosen us, God, as your people. I mean, part of that means that you believe that we can do the message that you've, uh, the mission that you've called us to. God, I pray that you help us open up our eyes, that we can learn to see that uh, as we have pain sometimes and and uh, hurts in our lives that so do those around us, God. Um, we pray that you help us to, to take a hold uh, boldly of opportunities where we can be used to share hope to others, God, as they have just daily stresses of, of, uh, of finances, God, of, of dealing with, with family situations, God, of sometimes dealing with, with difficult, bad situations of, of violence, God, or whatever, whatever it is, the ways that they're, they're hungry and searching for happiness, God, that you can use us to come to show them the truth in you, God, um, and that all those things can only be fulfilled through your son, Jesus. God, it's in his holy name that we pray all these things. We pray that you um, help us to, to see our eyes and to, to see others the way that you see them, God. Um, we pray all this in his holy name. Amen.